Hello, everyone, and welcome to our online assembly for today, Sunday, April 26th, 2020. No matter where you are around the world watching us today, we want to let you know how glad we are that you've chosen to join us. And we pray God richly blesses you through our time together. We are a community that has found hope in Jesus Christ, and that's changed everything. We want to live each day of our life with purpose, joining God's mission to make this world a better place, just as God intended from the very beginning. If you want to know more about our church, check us out online. and We'd love to hear from you with any questions or needs that you might have. Last week, we started a seven-week series called Rescue, where we will be in the part of our Bible that has served as a worship hymnal to God's people for thousands of years. It's called the Book of Psalms. The first three weeks, we'll look at Psalms of Lament, Psalms that give us words to express to God our feelings of pain, grief, loss, and disillusionment. As we saw last week, this study is important, especially during this strange and unusual time, because expressing emotion is not something that comes natural for us. We're taught from a very early age that emotions are private. And expressing our deep feelings in public shows weakness and vulnerability. Many scholars say we live in a culture of emotional denial. I think back to the many times when as a minister I've been listening to the words of someone who is experiencing grief from the death of a loved one, perhaps a spouse, a child, or a parent. And often they would pause, they would become overcome with emotion, and they'd have to stop. And it would take them a while to compose themselves before they could continue. Do you want to guess what most often they would say as they resumed? Almost without exception, they would say, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. Let that sink in. For some reason, they felt the need to apologize for expressing their grief in public. Think about that. It's important for us as a community of faith to create a safe space for emotions to be expressed corporately to God. That means we need to recognize that what each of us are feeling is real and important. It means that we need to help each other look to God and talk to God in our pain. Now, if this were normal times, on this Sunday, we would be recognizing our college students, especially our seniors who are about to graduate and move away. But these are not normal times. Things have changed. No doubt they feel cheated out of special times and events that they look forward to for years. In a few weeks, we want to walk with our high school students in recognizing their sadness. But today we want to speak directly to our college students. In a few minutes, our college life minister, Brian Miller, will bring a lesson from another psalm of lament. And we'll also hear from Sean Burrow with some practical tips for processing our grief. So let's all be in prayer for the suffering and pain felt around the world in so many ways. And today we want to say to all of our college students that we love so much that we recognize your grief and disappointment and we want to join you in expressing these feelings to our God. So we're glad that you're with us. And Monty McCulley will now get us started in our time of corporate worship together. Monty? Hey, let's begin this morning in the Word together. This is out of Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. As we talk about rescue this morning, as we talk about God being the one who rescues us, may we remember that our salvation is found in Jesus Christ alone. So as you worship together in your room or living room or wherever you are, make it a place that is a, a place holy to the Lord today. And let's praise him through worship together. Before the world was made, before you spoke it to be, you were the king of kings. Yeah, you were, yeah, you were, and now you're reigning still. Enthroned above all things, angels and saints cry out. We join them as we sing glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Creator God, you gave me 
church. I'm so excited to be here today to be able to share a thought uh, leading into communion. Um, communion being one of the most important things we do, remembering Jesus Christ, his sacrifice for us, uh, what he did on the cross, and being resurrected. Um, so when I was growing up in the youth group, we used to sing a song, and it was called, Can He Still Feel the Nails? The lyrics are, are this, Can He Still Feel the Nails Every Time I Fail? Can he hear the crowds cry crucify again? Am I causing him pain when I know I've got to change because I just can't bear the thought of hurting him? Now that's our perspective to Jesus when we sin. But that song was very solemn, very dark, and I think it brought up a lot of shame. And as Christians, that's not how the cross is supposed to be represented. So as I was online, I stumbled across a second verse. And the second verse, which somebody wrote, to add on to it, I think really fills in what the cross is really about. This is Jesus speaking to us. No, I can't feel the nails when my children fail. I came down to die and then to rise again. I know you feel ashamed, but the cross is worth the pain because I just can't bear the thought of losing you. Jesus Christ did all of this for us. He bore our sins, everything that we've done, everything that we're going to do. He died for all those things and now he's seated on his heavenly throne um, in heaven, and the angels are worshiping him. And we get to praise and worship that God. We get to praise that Jesus uh, who died and was resurrected. And that's the most beautiful thing, that he's taken our crimson robes, and with his blood, he's washed them white as snow. And so we get to celebrate that. And we get to celebrate with a community that's not just in your house today, um, not just in the church building where we used to always meet, but across the world, Christians are taking communion they're battling um, against evil, and we're preparing the, this earth for God's kingdom to come down here when Jesus returns. And so we're really excited about that, and I just want you to really focus on what Jesus has done for you and his sacrifice. Um, so with that, let's uh, say a prayer for the bread. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. Uh, I thank you for this time that we get to meet as a church, um, a separate uh, but together, God, help us to remember that community. Um, the Lord, help us to remember uh, the sacrifice that Jesus gave, his perfect life, um, all for us, God, that there is no shame, there is no guilt, but we are set free. Um, and you've just given your entire life for us, uh, that we may live with you. And we praise you and worship you, and we're so excited. I thank you, God. It's in Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen.
let's have a prayer for the cup, the place of celebration um, and the joy um, of Jesus' blood that was spilt on the cross for us. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you again for this opportunity to worship you, to love you, to focus on your Son, and to rekindle the fire and just to proclaim that you're coming, God, um, that you've been resurrected and that you're coming to us, that you're chasing after us. Uh, you long to be with us, and we drink the cup of salvation knowing that Jesus has paid it in full, that no matter what we do, we're saved and we're sanctified. And God, we live through this time uh, with purpose and knowing that you're coming soon, God, and we can't wait and we prepare for your kingdom to come. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love how our church is a praying church, and I'd like to make you aware that today is Blue Sunday, a day where Christians all over the nation are taking time to pray for victims of child abuse and those who rescue them. I work for Scotty's House in their forensic department as a family advocate, where I work with non-offending uh, caregivers and children that are victims of abuse every day. It has become painfully aware to me how much prayer and support for those impacted is needed, not only nationally, but here in our community as well. For family prayer time today, let's lift this need before our gracious Father. Let's pray for the hurt children, the broken families, and the compassionate advocates. As you are praying, you'll see specific prayer requests on the screen to guide your prayer, and then we will close our prayer time together. Thank you. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written. Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is To look on him and pardon. 
God, we know that you have a special place in your heart for children. We see so many times where Jesus welcomed and was always wanting to receive the little children and had such a special place in his heart for them. And, and God, in times like these, we know that there are children that are hurting and especially in frustrating and, and tense times like this, that sometimes situations are even worse than they than they might have been and and especially now god as we're mindful especially today of child abuse and and children in need we pray that uh, you would grant a, an extra measure of your grace and compassion on them and and that for us that you would give us eyes to to see those but but even more than that god please give us hands and feet to take action to to aid, to assist, to step in wherever you would have us. Um, God, help us to act on the ways that you might convict us or act on the ways of things that you might put in front of us or opportunities you give us. God, we thank you so much for the hope that you give us and the hope that uh, all of us have and, and even children in need that they have through you and just help us all be a, a light and a way to shine that hope. God, we thank you for Jesus who makes all of this possible. Amen. Two weeks ago, you might remember that we had a special donation on Easter Sunday to benefit the charities that we support uh, in, in the city. Uh, one of those being the Brazos Church Pantry. And as a volunteer for that uh, from a and Church, uh, I'd just like to thank you for that donation uh, for all of you who, who gave and also use this time to, to maybe give you an idea of how we operate uh, at, the, at the pantry, especially during this time of uh, coronavirus situation. There's 30 area churches that participate and support uh, the pantry and uh, those churches uh, contribute about 100 plus volunteers uh, at various times during the week. We operate from Monday to Saturday. Uh, so there's a, a lot of food uh, passed out from there and a lot of people served. So we make a lot of friends with, uh, with our brothers and sisters in the area and we, we uh, see lots of, uh, lots of people who are in need and that's, that's a blessing. When you walk into the pantry, don't think of a grocery store with open shelves you walk around to, to uh, things up. The way we work is customers can come in once a month and uh, they receive a shopping cart full of food items based on their family size. I really would just like you to take a look at the people uh, on the A&M church team uh, that, uh, that work regularly there. We, our, our team works on a Thursday and it's, it's a real blessing to partner with all of you in working at the, at the Brazos Church uh, Pantry. And we ask that you just please don't forget these uh, people who are in need of the very essential things in, the, in life uh, during this time. God bless you all. Good morning, my name is Brian Miller. I'm the College Life Minister at the a Church of Christ. I'm thankful for technology at this time when um, we need to be connected more but can't be physically in each other's presence. What a blessing. I was thinking that if we were 30, 40, maybe even 20 years ago, 20 years ago, we were in this circumstance we're in now, how difficult it would be 
because we wouldn't have the social media, we wouldn't have the texting, emailing ability. We would call maybe, but we had to be actually physically present where the phone was hanging on our wall or sitting in a table perhaps um, in our living room. So while technology is a great blessing, and I am thankful for it, grateful, no question, it is yet insufficient, isn't it? Um, even in the midst of having to use it more and being glad to see faces and to hear voices, I've been reminded about how wise God was, as a wise father would be, in encouraging us and wanting us to be in each other's physical presence. Being connected by technology isn't a good substitute for community and the life of the body together. So I'm anxiously looking toward the time, forward to the time when we can be together. I'm missing you. Um, looking forward to when we can actually just enjoy the community of uh, believers together in the same physical space. So I've had difficulty sleeping. What happens is I go to sleep, I go to bed, and I'll go to sleep pretty rapidly. But then after about an hour or an hour and a half, I'm waking back up again, and I'm awake for quite a while. Leslie and I have joked that three o'clock in the morning is typically the time when my mind has seemed to wind down and I am able to sort of just doze off finally. It's concerns, it's worries, it's prayers, it's maybe encapsulated in the what ifs. What if this happens? What if this happens? What if school doesn't start back? What if we don't get to do this? What about a second wave? All the things that uh, my mind will process in sort of the quietness and darkness of the night have kept me awake. So that's not really a diagnosis, but it's sort of my theory about what's happening. Um, in this area of what ifs, I was talking to one of our students recently who's planning for a wedding. And of course, long before this all started, there were the concerns and thoughts about all the things that have to happen for a wedding to, to happen. And those can be also sort of uh, verbalized in a what if. What if this happens? What if we don't get this? What if there's, what if it rains? I mean, all of the, all of the things that you think about when you're planning big events. And she said that in all of the what, what if wildness, she never considered a pandemic. So those thoughts of what ifs have been keeping me up, but I mentioned a minute ago, and it's true that the prayers have too. And there have been times when I've been praying and I have almost felt like there was my, I was speaking, speaking aloud to no audience. And that is somewhat captured in the Psalms of Lament. And we're going to be looking at a psalm of lament, Psalm 77. So if you'll get your Bible, turn to page whatever it is, Psalm 77, open up your phone or your iPad or computer and just wait there. We'll come back in just a second. I was thinking about college students specifically. All the things that they're missing, whether you're graduating or even an underclassman muster in person. We had it last night. I loved the visual at the end when they had the candles uh, that spelled out here. I loved that. <clears throat> but yet it was from a distance. Of course, graduation, ring dance, ring turning, Devos, AFC Devos. This weekend, we were actually going to be retreating those who are graduating <clears throat> out at Camp Creek to spend time together, to sort of reminisce, to play games, to talk. Um, we did it last year for all those graduating in 2019, whether it was May, August, or December. We were doing it this year. This weekend, we were supposed to be out there. Of course, we're not doing that. And that just is um, sort of touching the surface. That's just what can come to my mind of all the things or some of the things that we're missing. And even undergraduates, um, juniors, many of them were getting their rings and they were gonna have parties with family and friends celebrating that milestone. 
So our AFC students and even high school students, certainly, and even all of us who are not students, are coming to grips with these expectations that never were realized, these hopeful things that were never that never came to fruition. In that vein, what we have is we have a video I'd like you to see of three of our students who are seniors who are sort of trying to capture some of their thoughts around what they're feeling and experiencing. So this isn't um, a bunch of students who are saying, you know, quick little snippets. These, this is meant to be a little bit more extensive. And so we have three students who are gonna share some of their thoughts um, during this time. The most difficult thing about just these crazy times for me has definitely been feeling like I'm stuck in a place of uncertainty. Um, I'm very much someone who likes to have a plan. I like to be in control of that plan, to know every step of the plan. And so to be in a time where the best thing that I can do is to stay home and do nothing is, it just goes against every way that I'm wired. Um, and I've been kind of struggling with just feeling like I'm leaving this stage of life unfinished. And I'm just very conscious of kind of the goodbyes I didn't get to say or the things that I didn't know I was doing for the last time and kind of feeling like this door to my college years of life just kind of closed way faster than I intended it to. And it's definitely been just a humbling reminder that my plans are not my own, that God is greater, God is in control, and he's taking me on a path that he wants for me. It's very sad and it's extremely depressing to think about the fact that I won't get to have one more Thursday night with all my family, with all my my close friends, the body that meets on Academic Plaza. It's extremely sad to get to think about that, but it's comforting to know that God still has a plan in all of this. And even when I try to put it in perspective, I can't think about how beautiful and wonderful the plan that God has is. And this is one extremely important chapter and everybody's lives that's involved in it now and it's extremely important in mine to have to step out in faith and trust that everything is going to work. There's a peace and a serenity in knowing that it's not just all happening by chance, that there is a being, there is a creator and a divine power behind all of this going on that is directing and overseeing all of what we have going on around us. And I don't fully understand it now, and I don't know if I ever will, but I find comfort in saying those words that my God, the power and the, and the being that I trust and that I love has got this even when I don't understand it. Being forced to be pulled away from like college for me, Aggies for Christ, going to church at a building, uh, friends, family, but most importantly, eating at Fuego. <laughs> Satan knows how to attack and distract me through my immediate loss of connections as someone like me who receives energy by being around people. I have connected through Psalm 13, which is a lament to God in a time of despair. To me, that how long question resembles how we are destined to turn to the Lord in our despair. In situations like the world today, Satan tells us that God isn't there and he uses our idleness to attack our biggest weaknesses, which for me is the feeling of loneliness. It's easy to lose motivation to seek God and remember everything he has done for us. But that's exactly what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to continuously lay our worries at his feet and lament with him because of his unfailing love and sovereign care. Just like Psalm 13 ends, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation and I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. Remember to rejoice in salvation because of how good he is to us. And that gives me great comfort. Thank you, Harrison. Thank you, Avery, and thank you, Faith, for your words. So, you're in Psalm 77, perhaps. Hopefully, we're going to look at some of the verses. We're not going to read through the whole psalm at once. 
love for you to do that later. We're going to look at specific verses. Many of the verses we'll look at, but we're not going to read through the whole psalm in anticipation of you doing that later. And then I'm going to mention a couple other psalms that you ought to piggyback on Psalm 77 to get a, com a more complete picture of lament, but also celebration. So in Psalm 77, um, it is a psalm of lament. And so it has this sort of complaining, questioning, mournful um, tone about it. Um, Asaph, the writer, is expressing a frustration about whatever circumstances happen to be uh, his at the moment, or maybe the nation of Israel. And we're going to look at specific verses. So, and I'm going to read the verses, then make a few comments about each. So the first passage we're going to look at is verse uh, 2 through verse 4. Or verse 2 and verse 4, excuse me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord at night. I stretched out untiring hands, and I would not be consoled. And then verse 4. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. So it seems like the writer perhaps was not sleeping very well also. But one of the important points here is that even in his distress, he chose to go toward God. One of the cautions that... Um, might need to be stated is that sometimes in our deepest distresses, we just sort of um, sort of just get enveloped in ourself and dwell in the thoughts and the negativity and the sadness and discouragement when that should propel us towards seeking God. So the writer is seeking God at this point, but he's inconsolable. Um, he can't sleep. His, maybe his crying out to God is what's keeping him awake. But have you ever been so distraught that you can't explain what it is that you're even feeling or thinking? Or you can't even just get it <clears throat> captured in a few sentences. So the writer says, even though uh, I was awake, even though I couldn't talk in my eyes, have your eyes ever been so tired and you just wanted to sleep so badly, but it was still so elusive. That seems to be what the writer of this psalm is expressing. Then, in verses 7 through 9, we have six questions in succession. So, verses 7 through 9. Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? These, saw, these questions reminded me of sometimes when I've been frustrated uh, and I might go, what were you thinking? What are you doing? What did you think was going to happen? Who are you? We just sort of spew these questions in frustration. And that's what happens in 7 through 9. But then in verse 10, it changes. See, he says, then I thought. And then verse 11, we start seeing the change. The lament and mournful sadness, the questioning, where is God? Then the change, because he started thinking. And what did he start thinking of? Verse 11, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. One of the important things about uh the Bible is it's calling on our memories. And he's got the questions in 7 through 9, but then in verse 10 and 11, he starts going through uh, the answer. And where is his answer found? His answer is found in his faith and in his memory. Memory <coughs> and faith <coughs> are somewhat linked because our faith is fueled often by our memories. Then, Moving on, verse 13, it says, Your ways are holy. What God is as great as our God? And this is where I would like for you later to go to Psalm 113 and you see a beautiful psalm that answers that question. What God 
is as holy or as great as our God. Then verse 19, your path led to the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. One of the things that is a constant uh, technique of the writers in the Old Testament is a recalling of God's deliverance through the Red Sea and across the Jordan River. On dry land, he delivered his people. He rescued them. <clears throat> but what it says here and what they would have known then is that, or maybe had processed after the event through history in their years of oral exchange of the stories was that God walked or went with them, but his footprints were not seen. Now, I think that's cool. The fact that God went before and he led them on the dry land, but during the time it was happening, you couldn't necessarily detect God's presence or availability. And that gives me comfort. I have a few points that I want to show you about what I see. Number one, no fake smile required and no mean face. What I mean by that is that we don't have to be timid. We can be confident in our expressions to God. He is able to take our complaint. <clears throat> so we don't have to stay level-headed. We don't have to keep our emotions in check. We can express all that we want to God. And then no mean face. I don't know about you parents, but there have been times when I think my kids have said, oh, but you had a mean face or have a mean face. I've been thinking about that lately. I said it to the AFC in a class. The fact that we can approach God and not be thinking, oh, he's got his mean face. There's no need to do that. Point two is that we can and should celebrate God. Every time is the right time to worship, even in the inconsolable times. Point three, good is happening even when you can't see it. And we know good has happened because it's happened before and we didn't see it. Just a quick list of all the things that scripture tells us that God is sovereign over. You can think of your own list. This is partial. Wind, thunder, lightning, snow, frogs, gnats, flies, locusts, quails, worms, sparrows, lilies, grass, trees, famine and harvest, prison doors, gravestones, blindness, deafness, all diseases, travel plans, planets, constellations, hail, sunrise, sunset, and nations. And that's not even a complete list. Sometimes when we feel like God is absent, we think in this void that Satan will step into. I read a phrase recently that I really liked. I'm going to share it with you now. I think about it rather frequently. It is this. God has Satan on his leash, and it's not the other way around. <clears throat> I wanted to finish this morning by reading some verses from Psalm 91. I'm going to pause for a second, let you go to Psalm 91. And then I'm going to share a few verses. This is not a psalm of lament. This is a psalm of celebration, of acknowledgement of the power and sovereignty of our God, which is where we should find ourselves, even in mournful times, both happy times and sad times. God is worthy of praise. Psalm 91, because there is a specific verse or two that addresses what we're currently experiencing. Psalm 91, verse 1, verse 2, parts of 3, verse 5 and 6. It's a longer psalm. You can read it later, but that's what I'm going to read this morning. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my Lord in whom I trust. Surely he was, will save you from the deadly pestilence. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys 
at midday. Let us take comfort in God's sovereignty and in his word, his faithfulness, and his abiding presence. Sean Burrow is going to speak to you now um, and give practical tips to AFC students, to all of us who are experiencing uh, loss in the sense that we are not being able to live how we would have planned, um, how we're missing out, all these feelings that are hard to sometimes verbalize. Sean, the director of our uh, Christian Counseling Center and a minister of our church, is going to share with you some practical tips that would be ways to approach how we're living now. Thank you, Brian. Howdy, AFCers and others who are watching this morning. Throughout the last few weeks, you might have been feeling just a sense of loss or sadness about not experiencing what should have happened. If you have felt that way lately, then I want to speak to you just for a moment. You might feel like you've had a few things snatched away in this last half of the semester. Maybe it's a Bible study. Maybe it's an intergen group that you belong to. Maybe it's your last school finals at A&M, or maybe not. Maybe it's your favorite restaurant, like Fuego's. Maybe it's up-and-coming events that may have been canceled, such as summer mission trips. Maybe it's even a wedding. Or maybe it's just being together at the A&M church for one last time as a senior. So Psalm 77 is a great chapter for us to hear the words and connect with what's being communicated in God's word. This idea of lament or our expression of sorrow and sadness may be focused on experiences that are not being fulfilled can bring a great sense of disappointment and even depressive responses. This global pandemic has created a new reality marked by grief and loss. The disruptions in the normal routines and rhythms of everyday life contribute to the lingering unease and sadness that we're all feeling. Not only are we mourning the loss of thousands of lives, but we are also mourning the loss of normalcy. You might be experiencing an overload of information trying to keep up with all the facts that are going on about the pandemic while experiencing an underwhelming connection with the ones you love. So, here are five ways that you can deal with these types of feelings when you find yourself there. Number one, real simple, reach out to each other. Reach out to someone. Let them know that you love them and that you're thinking about them. It can make a world of difference, not only to them, but to the way that you're serving others. Number two, spend time remembering funny and unique memories that you've made with others. Trips that you uh, have taken together and, and the memories that you made on those trips. Share those with each other. Number three, I wanna encourage you to not only text each other, but also call the people that you're missing. To hear their voice can be really encouraging Number four, share a verse uh, of encouragement with somebody that you're missing or somebody that you know that needs it. So God's word is powerful and always encouraging. So share that with those that are around you. Number five, be aware of the expectations that you have, especially during this time, because we need to be aware of the expectations that might have been broken during this time. So this is an opportunity to reset some of those to new expectations. And when you do that, this will affect our emotional, relational, spiritual walk with God and with others. So as we experience grief and loss throughout these times, we have to remember that we are only grieving temporarily because of the hope we have in Christ. Sometimes our lens is affected by our experiences, which can let the what ifs, fears creep in. So this morning, I wanna encourage you to have God as your foundation and lean on his strength during this time. 
I'm going to leave you with Psalms 46, 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. God is our refuge. I hope and pray that you have a great rest of the day, and I hope that this has been helpful in your journey through this time. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord. Lord of all, when darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When He shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in Righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord. Hey, we are so glad you've been with us today. Thank you for taking part of your morning and part of your time to be with us in worship. And even though we as a church family aren't together in one place, we are still united in Jesus Christ, united by the love of God that holds us all together. So thanks for being part of our worship time today. You know, there are so many ministry opportunities that are going on right now. And if you would like to give to that, you can do so in three different ways. On the screen right now, you see that you can give online through CCB or through Tithely, and you can also send your checks here to the church office. In just a moment, Tim Brandon is going to close us out with a blessing and with a prayer this morning. Again, we've glad, we're glad you've been with us. We hope you have a wonderful week, and may God be honored in all of our lives. Good morning. My name is Tim Brandon, one of the church shepherds. I want to thank you for being here this morning. If you're not one of our usual church members, I want to thank you also particularly for streaming with us and hope you've enjoyed the time you've spent praising and worshiping God. 
We invite you back again uh, here online, and also you're welcome to give the church a contact at am.church. If you have any questions or if you have any needs that we could help meet or ways we could serve you, but thanks for being here. I want to mention to you just a minute about uh, the generosity that we've been seeing the past few weeks in, in churches really around the country, but also particularly just in our church family. There's just been a lot of events come up and opportunities for people to reach out, uh, be generous, be creative with their gifting, uh, for deferring to people, to finding ways of blessing others that are different and unique and it's just been amazing uh, thank you for sharing those stories thank you for uh, blessing others with, others with those stories and uh, you'll be hearing more about those in the coming weeks and opportunities that our church collectively has had the opportunity to do that uh, partially through the mission action group finding ways of blessing um, ministries who we've supported previously and finding ways of being a blessing around the world uh, but even in little ways um, just the cards letters mail prayer emails, text messages, Zoom meetings, all the ways in which we're now reaching out. It's just been a great encouragement uh, to the elder group, to the staff, and we appreciate all that you're doing. You know, Art Linkletter uh, was famous for saying, things turn out best for those who make the best out of the way things turn out. That's a mouthful, but it's another way of saying redemption. And God, God is redeeming things right now. There's redemption happening in all the efforts that you're doing, uh, the things that you're praying, the ways you're trying to uh, meet needs, the ways you're serving your family. Uh, all those things that seem awkward and cumbersome right now are being redeemed for God. Uh, Max Ocato has also mentioned that sometimes things are, are the biggest blessings God dresses in calamity. And you have no further than the cross to look for a good example of that. So when things seem to be at their worst, sometimes God is doing his, his best work. So thank you for doing that uh, in your lives. Let's pray as we end our time together. God, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for allowing us to join you. Thank you for your blessing and your grace and your mercy. Lord, that you would invite us to your family and around your table is an incredible gift. And we thank you for that. Lord, we pray for those who are affected in these past weeks with sickness, illness, uh, with inability to communicate with family, uh, with loss, opportunity for working uh, with various other ways in which things have not gone as expected. God, we pray that you and all things would be praised. That if in any of this hardship or calamity or trouble or trial, that we can find ways of giving you glory for it, we pray that we would be able to do that. Pray that you would strengthen your church. That there'd be a time of growth, a time of great service and revival, one of which we could never have planned or imagined. Thank you for the way you hold us safely in your hand. And through Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. I got a jury summons and I don't have to go. <laughs> Judge Smith, if you're watching this, no disrespect intended. Bye y'all. Best thing has, that, that has happened, happened to me this week was as I'm picking blueberries and riding my big bike. The best part of our week is enjoying a little bit of nature.
I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required Search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you, all about you, Jesus King of endless words How much you deserve Though I'm weak and poor All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required Search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you, all about you, Jesus I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you, all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you, all about you, Jesus I sought the Lord, and He answered me And delivered me from every fear those who look on Him are radiant. They'll never be ashamed. They'll never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me and saved me from my enemies. The Son of God. Surrounds his saints He will deliver them He will deliver them Magnify the Lord with me Come and song Everything.